Oh, precious channel. It is I, your friend Jeffrey K. Horkims. Um, I made the mistake of watching a video of Acquisitions Intoxicated, and I realized uh, when I was watching it that for about the first 10 minutes of the show, yeah. I sort of rub my hands like a like an evil vizier. Like you're just behind <laughs> it, the count, like exactly. the, so the I'm, dais of... I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna try to keep them down here. Do uh, it's very challenging. Now, now I'm overthinking it. Yeah. But listen, uh, everything else about the show is still true. I'm gonna try to rub with less vigor. Well, I mean, rub that. Oh, no, no, l listen, obviously the grains are getting rubbed. Listen, we're getting sure. ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, this is Acquisitions Intoxicated. This is a show where we take a nerdy thing and then we we Make distill it, it into more uh, in, into something that is uh, even more nerdy than it yeah. than it might have been originally. So this is uh, based on Acquisitions Incorporated, it's a thing. which is basically like live uh, live theater, but Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. It's like live theater if like Shakespeare used dice to determine the outcome of yeah, scenes and had dragons. And, yes, well, and, you know, and there was a dragon as well. Yeah. But uh, I'm super, super excited because tomorrow, uh, on this very channel, uh, thank you, Steampunk Jesus. Tomorrow, uh, we are going to be getting totally crazy with the second episode of the C Team, Acquisitions Incorporated, four to seven, P S T, uh, for your use. Now, I am Jeffrey K. Horkims, uh, the aforementioned friend. This is uh, Eric Benson, AKA uh, the Notorious EJB. Uh, thank you so much, Scarecrow Deluxe uh, and uh, Richter. Um, also, uh, Azerbaijan, very briefly, mm -hmm. one, time, one time, maybe two maybe. years ago. Yeah. Um, it was fine. But, but listen, it was once. he is our brewmaster. Uh, and it is, uh, Captain Winsover, goodness gracious, it is a, it is a love festival today. Yeah, right. um, so what we're going to do, the basic narrative arc, the hero's journey of these grains, mm. if you will, is we're going to start by making the recipe... Uh, that we worked on uh, with you on the channel last week. This time around, it's Green Flame. We're going to try to make a pepper ale Ooh, yeah. utilizing uh, jalapenos. Should be It should be an interesting feat. Um, after we have gone through that, talked about some of our recipe uh, strategies that we employed, um, you're going to see me build it all here in this right here. This is called the step filter. This goes into the Pico Brew device that you see over here. Uh, and then while it is constructing the beer before your very eyes, according to a ritual which you will, you know, be able to absorb uh, right here, uh, then we are going to tap and serve Widow's so Wake. This is going to be amazing. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So we like, have held off purposefully, strategically. There were, There is a method to the madness, yeah. as I say. So, we are big, big fans of IPAs, mm. as is 70% of the beer market right, in yeah. the United States. Um, Weird. Oh, so, yeah. for our part, um, we have specifically, scrupulously held off uh, on trying to uh, get too crazy with IPAs. Yeah. I mean, that's what we want to make yeah. the most. Yeah, like, we have all these ideas for IPAs. Exactly. And then it's just like, no, let's just... Do so, some other style exactly. Players. So, we held off until we had made what, 12, 13 if not batches? More, I think. Um, so, we are very, very excited. We just got, oh, thank you, Shroomish. That's awesome. I'm so glad to be of service. But we got obsessed with a hop called El Dorado, mm -hmm. which is supposedly, supposedly, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a poetry to this, right? But when they say like stone fruits mm -hmm. and things like that, but it's a very, like the, the overall effect is that it has an authentically juicy oh, yeah. taste um, that still tastes fresh even though it is like bong water dank. It's dank, but has a lot. The, the fruit still comes through. The mangoes, yeah. the peaches, exactly. the pear. Generally speaking, yeah, you're dank, and then you have like your sharper, <coughs> yeah. tangy type notes. And El Dorado, at least for us, with the apparatus that we have available, mm. um, it it delivers. It delivers on two. It's it's almost like um, when you have like the two like two opposite colors. Yeah, totally. On the wheel, like yep. it is delivering both of these notes at the same time. Sometime. So. Uh, green Flame, what do we got? What do we got for Green Flame? So, this is a very simple build because we wanted to really enunciate the, the pepper we were going to Well, exactly. In. And so, what we, what we constructed, thank you so much, uh, what we constructed, uh, with your assistance, of course, um, curatorial as always, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was that we wanted to make something, we wanted to make the ale part of this pepper ale sort of like, hey, what's going on? I'm the ale and this is my good friend. Yeah. 
Right. Jalapeno. The, the ale is basically just yeah. like the wingman yeah, yeah, yeah. for the pepper. And the pepper's just dancing on the floor oh, oh, no, no. for everybody. It's, it's, you know, yeah, everybody's, everybody's getting full performance. A, he doesn't give a... He doesn't, he doesn't give a whoop. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what do we have in here? So this is a really easy build. This is five pounds uh, worth of two-row malt, which yeah. is your standard base malt that's going to give Two-row malt is like, is like bog standard. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, you know, check your grocer's freezer. Right, like it's right, not... right. It's there. It's, a, you know. Yeah. And only uh, a half a pound of Crystal 20 to give yeah, it a little I was bit of that say, golden I was, color. I was going to say, but like the Crystal 20 is basically all you're smelling in here. Yeah. I mean, take a look at this. Like the two row is like, hey, what's up? Ooh, it's like, ha, ha, friends. Exactly. But all, but I basically. The sugar. Yeah, exactly. The nose yeah. um, is all over on the other but, part but, of the bill. And you're, you're noticing it's, it's not very complex when it comes to that no no other malt i mean yeah i mean this is like it's the, the only thing we've done simpler than this was probably a viari's yeah. goza which is still to my mind like if that were available in a store i would buy it yeah to yes, like yeah i don't goza i don't even know how we got to soured beers in general are not my thing and for some reason that had uh it had the right it had the right mix yeah of being sour, but then it was probably because you were back there um, going nuts on a rind. Oh yeah, like it was the Dude, the, 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 or, the was, orange rind. Yeah, literally just I think grinding is the key. two Thank oranges. You. Yeah, 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 and I, I think that that's what allowed it to sort of <coughs> remain fresh, even though it has that. Um, even though we use the acidulated malts to give it the like the lactose, yeah, exactly. the lactic acid. All right, hey, so, so uh, what's, what's next? The first hop we have in this is going to be our this bittering. Will it right? No, it's the cascade. Oh, is it okay? So take a whiff of that. You can get a better, um, better n nose out of the bag. But this is that, I don't know. This is that spicy floral. It's going to give you a little bit of grapefruit character. Oh no, you're right. God, out of the bag, that's not the same at all. Yeah. Good but God. It's it's still going to give us a little bit of that fruit, um, but mostly spicy and floral flavors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like we were saying before, it wasn't until I got out to the East Coast yeah. and I had the East Coast IPA where I was like, where they're they're putting the flowers front and center, right. whereas we're we're going a we're little going bit different. Bitter, yeah, you, West Coast is very bitter, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely the a stunt. Yeah. There's a stunt aspect as we described, but choosing the floral taste, which is not like that's not the common. No. That's not the common strat. Like it's clearly like it, it, like ecologically yeah. like yeah, 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 this yeah. is the response to like an apex predator right. type thing. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah. The, that's but, that's killing it. And that's Cascade. So that's. Um, Three quarters of an ounce of Cascade that it's going to go in there. Mm -hmm. That's going to bring us up about 29.3 IBUs. Which is, you know, I mean, below where most IPAs would start. Yeah. Well, right? and, and that's the thing. We're, this is a pale ale, so we don't want we don't want to have that high bitterness because we, we really want the flavor to be derived from the peppers that exactly. we're going to throw in here. All right, now where are we going with this Willamette? Man, that's very, oh, that is... Different, Super right? sharp, yeah. This is going to give this. Remember, this is what uh, the chat voted for because it, it brings that grassy, um, oh yeah, florally and you can and spicy, tell, yeah, flavor. It's, it's, yeah, it's a lot more grassy than, than exactly. And that that grassy, like again, you'd think you wouldn't want this, but right, I'm just right. going to say it. Right, you're like there mm. is definitely a hey, you know, yeah, like it's, it's like, not your first hey. choice. No, but it's but. What it's doing is it's it's sort of cutting out a place in the middle of the flavor. Yeah, totally. For that sort of like, for the that grass sharpness, right? Like a fresh cut type right. grass. And think about how that's going to interact with those again the, with the peppers we throw in there. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the idea is that, and because we'd had this experience before too, mm -hmm. it's like if you have a fresh pepper, like we have the scorpions. Yeah. Oh. So oh. if you have the the fresh pepper has a distinct character. Yeah. That that optimally, if we're doing this right, right, we're not going with extracts, we're going with that, like, we're gonna get the fresh pepper right. taste, and it's gonna want something, it's gonna want somebody to hang out with it in the middle of that yeah. it's gonna, uh, it's, it's, arc, right? I, I don't wanna say it's not gonna balance it, but it's definitely going no, to... It definitely will. Have, ...have an effect. Yeah, exactly. There. So that's it, no whirl flock in this nope, one? we're good. And that's, there it is, and that's how easy this beer is really gonna yeah. be. Exactly, Corporal McMuffin. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Because really, we're coming after we're we're coming after this later. Yep. Um, with the extra benefit um, of the fresh of the, peppers, of that the fresh that peppers. comes in late. That yeah. is not something that gets thrown in here. No. Nope. Because by the time this gets done boiling it for two hours, right? 
it's not going to be anything like the well, what we think of as a pepper. Yeah, right? exactly. Well, we we kind of wanted to go with okay, we want the pepper flavor more than the, the pepper um, or the the aroma of the pepper. Yes, exactly. More than we, the, we want to deliver a premium pepper experience. Hey. So what are we so, doing here? So it's like, this is, did, I, did you psychologically, get it? Did you get no, it? I, I, I'm are just. You about, are you about to push in? No, I'm just, I'm taking a second just to center myself. Don't fucking, you know what I mean? Listen. Like, I mean, don't I'm, be a fucking, don't do. Goose Fraba. All right. You know? No, 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 I don't know what that is, but. Caddyshack? Are you kidding me? Is that a shack? I don't know. You know what I mean? What? I was very Christian. What? I was a very Christian boy in the 80s. What? Listen. We'll, we'll listen. We're gonna, we're gonna when have to the come alcohol back and have a con- comes, we'll, we'll we're gonna have a conversation. All right, about here. This. So I have found channel that there's a little. If I if I do a little lift, just, I, a, just a poop. I have to. Okay, listen. All right, we're gonna try this. All right, ready? Yep. So, uh, do, do we want to talk about this? This has never happened before. <laughs> All right. No, so don't, don't look away. Don't look, don't look, like, if you're watching, then I can't. Like, you gotta, you gotta. I mean, second time's a charm? No. Third time? No. Lift. Poop. Give it a little push. Maybe, maybe if I, like, here. Here, here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come over okay, here, okay. and I'm gonna be like, "Hey, what's what are you doing? Like, so, what do you got going on today?" So you know, I, I we're, we're gonna do this. Like, ah! like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it worked! It worked, motherfucker! I Fooled snuck up on that it. shit. It ain't even no. All right, now uh, we're gonna cue up our green flame. Now, if you have never seen. The show before, <coughs> there's going to be things that maybe you don't know about it, mm-hmm. and that's okay. We're going to tell you about it. As we are fond of saying, this is a human art form, and you uh, <laughs> oh, you own it just as much as anyone else. Oreo Omega, this, this is our chicken dinner, is getting it in there. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, so uh, when I pop that in there, I choose the recipe up here, but just understand, like, we're all dorks here, like, yeah. you're watching this on a TV network, that's broadcast live on the internet. You can, you got this. You can figure it out. So, um, basically, brewmaster Eric Benson goes into a what's functionally speaking a kind of web app, yeah, a web backend, yep. and he sets up all the ingredients, all the timings, everything that he would do manually at home, right? This he, machine. Yeah, exactly. And this is not the this is not the only machine yeah. of its kind. There are a few machines that exist in this space. A couple have been kickstarted. Right. They offer a variety of different sizes and scales. This is just the one that I kickstarted, and I happen to like it. Yeah. But here's the key: um, everything, every resource that you have set up here in that back end, you create all your recipes, and then as soon as you plug this thing in, oh, thank you so much, thank you so much, if I can go. Um, as soon as you set this thing up, uh, the first thing it does is connect to Wi-Fi. So this whole thing is actually like a custom Arduino yeah. solution, I think. And uh, it goes out via Wi-Fi or, uh, or hard wire, grabs all the, all the recipes you put in yep. there. When you choose one, it goes up. Now, so the water is over in our secondary tank. You can't see it right now, but that's okay. Um, and then it is basically doing its best to bring that water temperature uh, up to the 102 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to be the first phase. It's called the dough in or the ma- uh, dough in or and a protein rest. Exactly, but it's going to start soaking those grains to get that product they're to already, bring it out. They're already yelling at you to sing. If like, you listen, if you want me to sing, I got You got to use the emote. I'm sorry. Look but, at that! Oh, look at those emotes! <clears throat> see now, zing it. No problem. Now, historically speaking, I do not rub the grains before uh, dough in, but. Maybe maybe these grains are lonely. Yeah. Maybe these grains are a little nervous, like they don't know what's going to happen, right? But this is an opportunity for us to teach these grains that it's going to be okay, that obviously they're among friends. Now, <clears throat> why do we rub and sing to the grains? Two reasons, two reasons. One. One. Creamy mouthfeel. Two. Incredible head retention. So 
Uh, these are both beer terms. Yep. And uh, they're very important. Yeah, and now, uh, all accomplished <laughs> by the simple step of rubbing grains. Exactly. Now it has nothing to do with what we're putting in there. So you really have, just rubbing grains. No, no. So you have been back here going hog wild on this thing, and you've been telling me that we've got something. I am. That you're, you're telling me that Widow's Wake, which of course uh, is designed to honor the boat of Team N, uh, out so at, cool out at Neverwinter, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, we got the uh, IPA back here, right? Oh yeah. So their boat is actually called the Merry Widow, but this is the darkness she leaves in her wake. Let's give it a try. Now, would you please tell the gathered throng mm. um, what we got why it is distinct uh, that it is a rye IPA and also express the moment of terror you had initially. Yeah, so this was great. We used a lot of rye in this, a lot more than normal. Um, and, you know, usually when we, uh, you know, finish up a beer and it's going into the keg, I'll have a sip just to see like, what, you know, where we're at with it. And, and, and understand that that is, that is a, that's common. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, have you, to you, do you that. Do, you do it all the There's time. There's tools expressly for it. Yeah, like you test your beers. You have to. Yeah. Right? And usually while, while I'm going through this process, I'm texting Jerry and I'm saying, okay, this is what it tastes like. This is where we're at. And I, I sent him a message. I'm like, Jerry, something's something's freaking wrong. Yeah, something's like, I don't, fucked up I'm, here. I don't understand what the hell's going on. And then I then like ten minutes later, I realized, oh wait, it's a rye PA and not an IPA. Exactly. Like, and it, then then it all made sense. And I'm like, this is the best beer, one of the best beers we've made. Exactly. Hey, now Josh, can you toss it over? Uh, can you toss the camera over to the uh, Pico? So here's my vizier rub. I need to minimize the vizier rub. <laughs> If possible, I need to turn it down. Turn it down. Oh, uh, well, no, no. I, I've I've fucked up this first one. It was oh. it was young coming off of the mm -hmm. the tap. But anyway, I just I want them to be able to see. First of all, see two things. One, uh, I have put in some shunts to try and uh, level this thing off. To try to level this thing off because we think that that might be the, that might be connected to the leaking. We'll find out today. Um, and two, I want you to take a look at the rich color. Yeah, the color uh, came out really, Some really portion great. of which is certainly down to rye. Oh, right? a, a lot of it. The majority of that is is the rye you're seeing. Exactly. Now, so so go into that, the, the spice. The spice that comes out of this. Yeah. So what we did was, I mean, this is another simple build. It's, it's Golden Promise Pale Malt. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about 18% rye, which is pretty, pretty heavy on the rye. Yeah. Um, which is going to give us a lot more spice, a lot more um, toffee and biscuity and bready flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use a just a little bit of crystal malt for that head retention. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it was all El Dorado hops. Yeah, because again, because we'd had one somewhere. Yep. Um, and we're blown away by it. Oh, yeah. Because th this is the funny thing, right? There's actually new hops. Like people are growing, like hops aren't done as an organism. No. Like people are making- No, they're people, coming out, new ones are coming out all the time. New exactly. Zealand is a big one. They're coming yeah. out with some really great hops. Well, yeah, and they grow super fast. Yep. It's like a plant that's designed to experiment with. Yeah. And so what we did with this was we hit it at first at 60 minutes with El Dorado. Then we did a 10 minute edition of El Dorado. Then once we stopped the boil, we hit another, another uh, edition right. of El Dorado and then Last week, we threw in another ounce of El Dorado right into secondary fermentation, which exactly. is called dry hopping. Dry hopping, right? And um, for people who want to experiment with dry hopping at home, don't worry about throwing the hops directly into the beer. You don't have to sanitize it. Um, really? Yeah, the, the, it, the hops don't, just aren't a great place for the bacteria to grow, so they won't typically grow on but don't, but, the hops. But, Typically, don't you put them in like a satchel or something That's like that? That's what you have to sanitize. Oh, you sanitize. So you basically, you're saying sanitize the bag. Yep, you don't have to sanitize the hops in any Yeah, in for any interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. But you can use a bag. You can use a little hop bag if you want. You can throw the hops directly in and then just siphon them off. There's, True, there's, at um, the end. Yeah, there's no, you know, it's six and one half a dozen in the other yeah. one. And it really comes down to personal preference. Cool. But that's that's well, where it's here. at. Here, so are we ready to try this? Oh yeah. Like the first, listen, we held Actually, off. You know, no, give give it another hit so you get some more head on the top of that. Thing. We 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 held off so long and now I'm nervous. We held off so long. See, look at how look at how you can put that on the top. Look at how cool yeah, that, this is how good say, that head that is. Was a head retention. The head retention is great. It's thick. It's now, 
take a look at the head on this beer and tell me if that head has not been retained. Dun, dun, dun. Has it been retained? Yes. Boom, head retention. Yes, obviously you can see Clues rocking the official oh, drawn and courier God, it came out so uh, livery there on the glass. But this is something I'm super, pretty excited about. Yeah. Are you ready to try it? Yes, so we take a good couple whiffs in. Like yeah, it. yeah, it, it just smells like regular old fruit, but how strong is this? Uh, this is actually only five and a half percent. Man. All but, right. But all you get is that, yeah. that El Dorado well, right exactly. off the top. From the dry edition. Yeah. And so, and so just real quick, I mean, a lot of you already know, but if you take, if you, the reason you add them to the actual fermenter is because it's a pretty, like hops are pretty fragile. A lot of the compounds in them are fragile. Yeah. Boiling them, obviously at every stage, adding them means something different because mm -hmm. of how long they're exposed to the hot water. Yep. If they're never exposed to it, you get some pretty profound yeah, uh, effects. Generally speaking, it'll be flavor stuff, but it, there at the end, the nose is one of the primary things you get out of a heap of Absolutely. raw hop in there, right? <sighs> yeah. What the fuck? Tell me that's not the, one of the best I, IPAs or IPAs you've had. I am so enthralled with this beer. What the hell? Yeah, it's cool as shit, right? I knew the sample. Yeah. That is so weird. So the rye, and I totally understand why you would have been agitated, right? <clears throat> the rye like amount in this build is pretty high. A lot of times if you're going to be making a rye IPA, yeah. It's going to be in there. You're going to sort of like gesticulate yeah. towards it, right? But this has a very very strong rye presence, like enough rye so that the hop actually has to work pretty hard. Yeah. But because the additions are all of the same hop, mm -hmm. and you know, we went in hard at the end with the dry edition, that rye bitterness in the middle is basically sheathed yeah. by the fruity By the hop. hop. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That's fucking wicked. Yeah. But it's very spicy and dark mm -hmm. precisely because I think because of the volume, of rye, yeah. right? Like it is the, you know, because El Dorado is such a fruity hop and delivers the, the, the stone fruits really, really well that it's just counteracting um, a lot of the milk <clears throat> Yeah, but that rye, that rye in the middle, like it- It's it, great. What makes it seem wholesome somehow? Yeah. Yeah, I got a smile on my like face. Like it gets, like, yeah, yeah. That is very good. That is very good. I know. But of course, right? Of course the first IPA we do is gonna be way, way out of left field. Right. Right? And it was the perfect IPA to do. Because especially because you know not a lot of rye PAs get made, so to to kind of experiment with that that area and that genre is really. I have cool. I have never tasted a beer like that. Yeah. Usually, if you've never tasted a beer like something, it's because it's not good. Yeah. I mean, these flavor profiles, these styles, they exist and have for a long right. time. Right. Right. Usually, if you have something that is like completely new, mm -hmm. it's because something is fucked up at a biological level. Right. Right. This is like, not oh, like we that. created something cool. Is this, you know, we just really screwed up. No, no, no. Yeah. We have to sterilize everything yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Like it's our fault. Yeah. Like it's something that we did yeah. to the to the ingredients. This is not like that. This is so strong. Like the middle of it, the middle of it is so strong. Mm -hmm. And its own sort of like that dark rye cracker, like its own bitterness and color is right there at a tier with the big additions in yeah. a way that I've, I've never had the two types of bitter in there actually work, right. right? It's like when we had that beer that had the Comet and the oh, fucking Galaxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it like, like, okay, no. well, this is gross. Yeah. Let's not drink this anymore. No, let's not go no, no. this. No, no, actually, but the truth is, and I think I talked about it on the stream before, like, I did drink it just, like, just to, to be drink like, it. fuck you. Yeah. Like, you you can't beat me. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that glass. Well, listen, that is exactly right. Uh, Dragon Breath, you're at work now, and you have Designing Great Beers as a lunch read. Welcome. 
Welcome, friend. This is what we're doing. This is what we're <coughs> That's doing. That's great. Come on in here. That you have every right to this. This is a human art form. Now, no, uh, Syrah, not a rye chip beer. This right here. No, I would like chips with this. Oh, dude, that Wartex is starting to get crazy. Vortex. That Wartex is starting to get crazy. Now, I think, I think that leveling this out might have might resolved have the issue. Let's not, let's not jinx it just yet. Okay, I don't want to fuck it. Yeah. But um, no, no, obviously keep, keep an eye on this precious Wartex. Um, and, you know, think of it like in a divination context. Sure. Like maybe, sure. maybe as you gaze into, into, into the Wartex, you know, what do you see as the next gazing beer? out, right? It's like, is it another self? Right. Is it your true beer self? Exactly. Does it have something to tell you? Yeah. Right? Uh, only on this show, uh, divination. Through grains? Grain? Yeah, yeah, it'd be like. It's like tea leaves, nah, but grain it'd be, leaves Yeah, no, it'd be like cereomancy. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so if there God, is. The grain of fissure. Gee, oh, no, man. listen, I do not support this grain of fissure nomenclature. You know this. You know this. Now. That was a that that was a Hartman that was a Hartman special. I'm down. It's all yeah. good. I just like the show. Hey. <laughs> so where are we going today? I don't know. Where do we want to go? The yeah. world is our oyster at this point. It is oyster beer. Oyster. We could do an oyster beer. Well, there is such a thing. There is. A, there actually is. Yeah. I think Ballas pointed one once. Well, there's and... no lie at a Spokane. So Spokane is a hellhole. <laughs> but it How do they does... even get fucking oysters in Spokane? I would I would not trust them, but No Lie uh, has an oyster stout. What? Yeah, yeah. We should try it one of these times. Like, My yeah. suspicion is that I mean that could be. I feel like that's something that. I don't know about it. I, I'll, I'll try anything, but I feel like oyster stout. I mean, I guess it's gonna be like a new mommy. There's gonna be like the fifth taste. You know, I don't Ugh. know. Oyster. I don't know about. Oyster I mean, we beer. could do it. Um, you know what we should do? We should get it to try on the show. Yeah. It's just at the corner store. I can roll down and yeah, get it anytime. Yeah, we'll like, just, I'll just, we'll I'll just, just bring it, it in. We'll be like, yeah, let's do it next okay, week. Okay, uh, yeah. this is a type of beer. Um, Blind Claret, listen. thank you so much. Hey, hey, hey. Now, Pedro, that is a great question. That's a good one. Have yeah. we had a Prophetess drawn or, or Audra order. Cordier beer? Now, technically, I feel like the Red Larch regular. Tenuous, we do not need a goddamn vote. Monster. All right. All right. Uh, for you, and Tenuous, here's what's up. You're gonna fi here's what you're gonna find out. <coughs> you're gonna find out. Should it be Grano Fissure or Vortex, which is better? Hey, Josh, you wanna call on the troops? All right, you animal. I'm gonna put this information up, and I know that all citizens of heart and character will vote with the two option. Yeah. And I know also that those scoundrels. Claptastic, thank you for your two. Yeah. Iron Knight, thank you. Archon, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Now, Captain McMuffin, what the hell were you thinking? Vote one to fight tyranny. Tenuous light, <sighs> indeed. Indeed, not coherent. Let's be clear about that. Let's Fuzzy talk about Fozzy, that. rad. Hannah, awesome vote. Pedro, you're on top of your game. Yeah, all right. I'm going to give it another 10 seconds. Aki Grimes! What the? Aki Grimes? Gonna have, we're going to have a talk. No. We're going to have a talk. No. All right, now, I'm gonna give it another five seconds or so, but what I have learned, tenuous light, our own private Satan, is that Vortex reigns supreme. <coughs> reigns supreme. <coughs> oh, Stenero, see, I didn't have to kill the voting as soon as two was in the lead, because I knew in my heart of hearts that it would generate roughly two times 
the other value, and I was correct. Now, so, but Audra Cordier is an acceptable. Yeah. Audra Cordier is a very, very good choice. That's a really good choice. Audra Cordier being uh, Prophet Dron's wife, uh, the adopted mother of uh, Omenifus, Auspicia, and Portentia. So that is a great choice. She is a courtier, as the name might suggest. Oh, a fen beer. Oh, fen. God, that's cool. Yeah, what, would, what would she make? I mean, hers would be all about the herbs. Yeah. So, and, and those can go super bad. But here, before we talk about oh, yeah, it, yeah, let me just, just put it in just, there. Just throw it in there. Uh, but Audra is obviously an awesome character. She's got a lot to do in season two. Mm. Audra, courtier. Uh, who else we got here? Fen, Team Ends, Obviator. Uh, and also the uh, director of security oh, God. at uh, Walnut Don Grass's Sebastian. Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian is a, as a, a lizard. I don't know about the lizard beer yet. <laughs> oh, uh, I think oh, St. No. Brian, Saint Saint Brian do don't worry. Beer. Say, yeah, don't worry. We will do a Crenar beer, but it's going to be... Um, like a root beer it's or something. Gonna, yeah, yeah it's, something it'll be like, something for kids. Yeah, or, like a Shirley Temple or something yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. But we, could, or, but we could also do a... Um, like a, a non-alcoholic beer. We could do a sparkling cider. Yeah. Um, it would not be hard to make a sparkling cider no, not at all. At all. No. Root beer, all that kind of stuff. And you can you, you can use traditional brewing techniques for those. Yeah. Nemazir, also interesting. Oh, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. I like, like what that. Do they, what do they make from that stuff, Yeah, right? like, like what, are, what are the droppings as it's carving down, right? Mm -hmm. What, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We haven't done Jeff No Magic, but that's going to be in that non-alcoholic mm -hmm. scenario. Ginger beer, I am way, way down with it. Um, Nemazir, Finn, Audra, is that a good list? Yeah, um, a Ligotti beer? God, that would be interesting. What would Ligotti be? Yeah. That, I mean, that's kind of that's, that's no, no, neat you, you, you know, it would be a framboise. Oh, yeah, it could be, yeah. Use the color yep. of the of the juice? Yep. Can you make a fram, can you make a fram, a framboise? Yeah. Do you know how? Yeah, it's just fruit beer. Really? You just add tons of fruit. It's so. just juice? Yeah. Okay. Just add extra juice. Tree syrup. <laughs> is Is maple used... In brewing as a sugar source, absolutely. I mean, you, you, I know that Bruce Smith supports it. Oh, absolutely. By volume I've done a lot. Of sugar I've done a lot of maple beers, and they come out fantastic. Also, molasses is another one that's really, yeah, really fun yeah, to play yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, because there's going to be a lot left over flavor-wise yeah. after the yeast is. I actually with did it. an Oktoberfest, and we put molasses in just as a see what would happen, and it mm -hmm. came out delicious. Ah, Welvers. Oh, Ack Inc. Rhymes has got an interesting idea. Which one? Well, something for the. Uh, Meat and mouse. Oh, cool! It, so after his, um, after his, uh, after we reveal the name, then let's let's oh, yeah. do a brew. Yeah. Minson. Nice. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and start this. We got a lot of good material here between yeah. these three characters. We can come up with something great, dude. Would you catch this grain of fissure? I mean, I mean, war checks. God damn you! Holy crap! You did it. Shut up, Josh. You did it. Shut up. Tenuous. I mean, he said it. Like, God you didn't even have to do it. it. Well, I could not be more... I could not be more angry. Oh, the elk, Brian. Uh, I'm, I'm, you dude, you literally put, you brought it on yourself. Cranial victory. I cannot you believe monster. what oh. you did. Here, here, here. But here's the main thing. I, I, I want to get through this here. It looks like Finn might be coming out on top. I don't know. It's close. Look at the Nemesis coming out. No, Nemesis ruling. Here, I, actually, they're all God, doing they're, great. Yeah, they're. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen uh, uh, a three of uh, them. Well, uh, I've never seen a, like a trident like this. This is great. Yeah. What it means is that there's real investment there on multiple tiers. Because the C team is the best. Uh, Angus McDonald wants to know if the Granal Fisher slip is an example of saying no and then agreeing. I guess so. Listen, Matt Will Jackson, I'm not going to talk about what might have been said, you know. All right. No? Maple Nemesis. Finn came out on top. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, here, now I'm going to hide this poll from the overlay. So it's, Finn is the character. Now, okay. uh, uh, take, uh, this is a Vortex 
to end all vortices. Look at this motherfucker. You're really just trying to make up for using granule fissure, aren't you? Well, yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, right? By the same token, <laughs> right? Yeah, don't get too punchy because I mean, when I mean, when Kiko comes in here yeah. and teaches us how to play Infinity, I'm going to kill you too. I'm every gonna you. I'm gonna that has never happened. It's never happened. You know how these sponsored streams go. Yeah, it's true. I have. I don't think I've won a sponsored stream. No, yet. they end. They end with you on a rough hewn cross. I mean, I, in a in a public place to warn others. That's where they. That's how it really ends. Really, that that bad? Yeah. I, mean, I, I thought it was just more kind of like, hey, Eric, you it's lost bad. again. Dude, but. listen. Did we figure out our lead? Jeff! I hey, thought man. I wasn't going to make it because oh. I had a business lunch and oh, then I totally. a meeting at one. Here we are, sir. Well, you might want to give him a bigger one. Hey, voila. Well, here, here, here. No, I have to have it. It's going to be like, happy for real. So. Oh, is it? Yeah, this, 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 this is our first IPA here, so oh. give that a try. It's going to be... But it, take a whiff. It's going to be a little get, get, bit more get challenging. Get your nostrils because there's a lot of fruit up top. <clears throat> also, keep in mind that it's brewed with a pretty substantial percentage of rye. So that gives the body a different character. Yeah, a little more astringent, uh, darker, spicier note. She's good, Pedro. We're waiting uh, till the 29th, and then she'll have us go for a <laughs> See, this is weird when chat like knows personal details. Yes. Like, yeah, tell me about hello, it. Everybody. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I guess you could relate. <laughs> All right, yes. I'm gonna sit back here while you guys chat. I'm in a position. Hey, so now that we got Finn. Which I think is a marvelous choice. But, but the thing is, there's so many cool kind of beers we could do for well, her. Obviously, there's cool kinds of beers, but in addition, we also have to think about Fen as a character. So, yeah. if you are a fan of Acquisitions Incorporated, the C Team, which, as I suggested, starts tomorrow, same channel, uh, cooking it up four to seven PST. Um, Fen is a type of character in the world of the of Acquisitions Incorporated, the C Team, called an Obviator who specializes in, they're basically like professional paranoids. Yeah. Like they don't get, par they're, they're not like paranoid about nothing. No. They're paranoid about real things. Specific situations <laughs> that could possibly happen and destroy everything exactly. that they're working so for. So they basically they have distilled paranoia into a kind of science. Mm. And uh, they have leveraged that combined with different types of cultural knowledge to um, create practices that uh, support life. Right. What do you think? All right. <clears throat> I don't. Where's this? Well, we, we got. They're all, they're all sort of pointing down. Let's okay. see. Um, this is a different. This is a whole different kind of IPA. So it is more hoppy than I prefer. Yeah. 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 Generally. But it's not. It's not so hoppy that I'd immediately be like, no, I will. I will not drink it. Yeah. Right. It's. It's got enough. It, if it. If it came out like on the taster tray, you'd be like, okay, I get okay, it. It's. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not for me, but I, I'd still consume it. Um, it reminds me a lot of a Manny's. Oh, okay. With with uh, fruit. With yes, Manny's has a very, very strong malt. Yes. And so we have the malt spine here is big, and then the thing that the thing that is making it tolerable for a Jeff, I think, has to do with the fact that the spicy grain build with all that rye can actually counter it. So there is a balance in the palate. Mm -hmm. It isn't just like this with like a like the same way that you, you do like a rum float. Mm -hmm. It isn't just this it's like hop oil float. Yeah. Like. That spice so, grain in the middle I, is providing contention. Yeah, like I don't know what it is. It, it, it's almost like an apricot mm -hmm. flavor to me. Yep. Am I right? Yeah, yep. Well, right. yes, exactly. So um, we, we leverage something called an Eldorado hop, and it specializes in the delivery of stone fruit flavors. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So that is what's mellowing out the hoppiness for yes. me mm -hmm. and, and making it. Yeah. It's, it, it's also a great hop. Wouldn't buy it. You're right, 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 right. But. If but you this is what they have it. on tap, I appreciate it. Um, I, I, I would be very curious to see you guys do IBU heavy, uh, like what what the what what the number is for bitterness for your beers. Like I don't know if there's a how they test that. Like oh. if there's a strip, you can start. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we can tell you exactly what it is. Yeah, actually, I mean, it's, it's just oh, yeah. science. So it's just science. It's just, it's just science. a ratio, yeah. right? It's I'm a ratio curious. from water so to right uh, now. Where are we looking at? Oh my gosh, that is like all your. Just, yeah, look, just a lot. look at all the beers, dude. We've made so many, right? Um, the IBUs. It's um, still not enough. No, no. Still not enough. I know. Where are the IBUs? This is at fifty-four IBUs. Okay, so, so it's not. This is middle of the road. Yeah, it's right exactly. in the middle. Exactly. Yep. So, just historically, when I go to a place and they have the listings. I'm looking in the 20s, usually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why I like the sweets. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, What's the port, right? Same thing. Good job, guys. <coughs> Thanks, pal.
Thanks for squeezing me in. Oh, Send my in pleasure. The, uh, the, the troops. All right, now, so, Finn. I know, oh God. So let's talk about Finn as a character, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. So as I said, an obviator is basically a professional paranoid. Oh, thanks, Haley. Um, is a professional paranoid, uh, and so does the beer represent her, or mm -hmm. does the beer, is its purpose to be uh, something like a protective? Right, right. Like, is it designed to be a kind of tincture that she puts one of these back? Now, I've had highly negative experiences with some herbs in brewing. Yeah. So I really, really like Black Raven. Mm -hmm. That's a, a local brewery yeah, a great place. in Redmond. Great spot. They have a lot of really good stuff. And in fact, that's where we discovered the Eldorado Hop. So yeah. nothing but love over there. But they have a beer called Kitty Cat Blues. Yeah. That It has blueberry, and that's good. But then it has catnip, and I don't know why. Like, the beer tastes like poison. It tastes like poison. It's not good. Ugh. It's not great. No. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's not great. Um, no, so they're talking about effervescence. Hello, S.A. Wells, thank you so much. Now, mm -hmm. that's true. I mean, we could go <coughs> with a Lambic-style beer. We haven't done one yet. A lambic is going to be fruity, complex, sour. Um, yeah, tangy. Tangy. It's a, it's it's it, in in essence, it's a wheat ale that has sourness to it, and it's be fruit, whatever style of fruit mm -hmm. you want. So yep. that that could be one that we play around with, uh, but we don't have to. It's, it's something off the top of the, the head. Yep, I'll throw it in there because I'm I'm a, a fan of the form, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, we could. I'm trying to think about other styles. We've done some. We've done some good. We have put together some awesome stuff. And and, um, which was the beer that was going to have the smoked grains? Oh no, the Roush beer. That's the Roush beer, but that's for the Wandering Crypt, right? Yes, very much so. So, uh, she was over on the weekend. In fact, we were hanging out with uh, Danny Hartel, mm -hmm. uh, Craft Hags, um, who did all the C Team costumes, which are absolutely stunning. Oh, they're amazing, as I'm sure you've seen. I think we fixed it, Mom man. Moment of truth, yeah. I think we fixed it. Anyway, um, it was a great pleasure to have them over, but I had the grill going, and so we were talking about the process by which we'll use to get the smoke on those grains. Mm. Um, and what we think we're going to do is actually smoke those grains while there's also a brisket and a rack of frips in there. It's going to be the because best thing It's going to be a very, very... It's going to be the best. It's going to be a great day. Let's just, let's just put it that way. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't get topped. Right? Now, um, what, are you, what are your thoughts? I don't know if I can relate this to Finn, um, but a Munich, Talk to me. a Munich Dunkel. This is a rich, dark, complex oh, beer. Oh, Dunkels are amazing. Yep. Um, it's bready, toasty, chocolatey. Um, it's not a harsh beer. It's not astringent. No. Um, but it, no, it does so, have some roast. It's so delicious. But you can also put in, um, one of my favorite Dunkels is Warsteiner. And it almost has a grapefruit flavor off the back end of the, or not a grapefruit, a grape flavor off the back end. Of it, it does. So I mean that I don't I don't know if we can relate that too much for. Fred. I can because remember it, it really depends on. It really depends on what we're trying to do, story wise. Mm. If it is because if it is something that she makes and something that she always has with her. Mm -hmm. We can sort of like retcon any of the ingredients, like that dark sweetness could be from a specific plant. Yeah. Um, or... You know, we've never done a fruit beer either. Tell me more. Just a straight fruit beer. Yeah? Um, like a cherry ale or a raspberry ale. Oh, exactly. And these are very common. Elderberry ale. Hey. Mr. Hartman, a dragonborn narcissist himself. How are you doing? All right. About 10 minutes before a call. Yeah. So this is going to be a smell it first because you're going to get a lot of. Um, Hop and flavor on the nose, and then it's going to be rye uh, on the body. I'm not proud of that. Just hold it and think good thoughts. Oh, all right. That works? Yeah. But you'll be able to get the nose right away. All right. Um, yes, so a dunkel, I like that. We'll come up with what it is. Yeah. Um, Story-wise. Yeah. The main thing is, let's make something great. Yeah. And then we'll try to come up with the right story alongside. Um, 
a spiced mead. I mean, we could we there could we do go. that. There we go. That's a whole different ball game. I mean, that's not it's not hard to make, but figuring out what spices we really want to throw <coughs> exactly, into that mead. Exactly, exactly. And so game. honestly, we should be looking at spices that either provide euphemistically um, or you know, were considered to have provided mm -hmm. medicinal benefits. Oh, right, exactly. So think, think of it as something like, it's like her potion. Yeah. Obviously, it's a, it's a beer because it has to keep. And that's the other thing. So with Finn, there's, there's a case to be made there that it has to be nautical ready. Right. And you can store it on the boat. It can, it can be rolling around in those barrels. Yeah. What is this? That is a rye, uh, in large part, rye-based uh, IPA. It doesn't taste like I was just saying to Josh. It doesn't yeah. taste like an IPA. It's no, not no. hoppy at all. No, yeah. exactly. No, it it's is. It's all flavor it's off actually, the nose. It is, it is pretty hoppy, actually, and it has a lot of dry additions as well. Hmm. But because the rye has kind of a dark, spicy note on the grain, that kind of comes in and hangs out with the IBUs. There's something going on. I can't. Yeah. It's, it's it, rye, I, rye beers are character. not, like at least in the US, they're not crazy common. I can't, yeah, I can't put my finger on it. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it's a spice. <clears throat> spice of life in it. The spice, yeah. yeah, as they say. All right, so spice mead looking good. Hey, I'm, I, I, I'm a mead fan, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Zingit. There are lots of different kinds of mead. Oh yeah, there. I mean, the the three general breakdowns are sweet, semi-sweet, and dry. Yeah, it's a it's a genre. Yeah, and there's a bunch of things that exist under the mead umbrella. Exactly. That you know are in a um, range of flavors. And there, you know, you go from what what style of mead you want to make down to what kind of honey you want because the bees that the that they are uh, the, when the bees go to the flower it depends on the flower there. Yep. And that, and, that is, and that confers an yep. effect on the Yeah, because you, you can get clove honey, you can get orange blossom, mm -hmm. uh, blackberry, blueberry, um, and that all will come through. Hey, Viking Goat wants to know if meads are prone to bruising. I've never uh, heard that term. Oh, Michael, all right. Oh, now, no, this is going to be good. I told Mike yep. that we were making, that what we had today was something kind of wild. Yeah. And it may not be for him. Let's let it sit for a second. Um, and it may not be for him, uh, but uh, that it would be very funny if he came and tried it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> Because it is Trey Tangy. Why is it all foamy on top? Because he turned into Jeff, apparently. Yeah, because well, <laughs> there can only be like one person who's good at pouring the beer. And Jeff sucked it all and out. And now that Jeff you? is now that Jeff is like ready to work in a bar. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. So it should come back in like twenty minutes. Or... <laughs> Well, here. Give maybe, him a real glass. Here, maybe Just I'll drink that one. Give him a big one. boy glass. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> That's all foam. So, so Jeff, how how you doing this evening? This is your hobby, right? <laughs> I, guys, I. This is hurtful, okay? Like, there's a point yeah, at which it becomes yeah, hurtful. I mean, can I drink through the foam? Yes, you yes, can. yes. It, fight through the pain. But uh, like, yeah, smell it up top because it's all it fruit. Smells really good. Yeah. Oh, right? it definitely does smell good. Now. <laughs> that's the best smelling one I think you guys have made. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and and that's all down to that hop. Yeah. It's a specific type of hop that has a fruity smell. Okay, so he made a face. With a second sip. He made a face, but he went back for sip two. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, now yeah, he's doing yeah, that yeah. thing where like a cat licks the wrong thing, <laughs> and it gets something like, like some pitch on its fur, and he's going <laughs> So that's the bitterness I was talking about. Mm. So whenever I bring you in, yeah. it's because we have not done that. Okay. So now he's going back for the third sip, it's like, once bitten, twice shy. Yeah. Well, you guys always say oh, it's, it's an acquired taste. I'm trying to acquire it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. will, and you, you will. will. You will acquire this oh, taste eventually. God, I don't know how you acquire that. <laughs> Here, I'll acquire it right now. <laughs> Man, I it's haven't fantastic. had it. What happened here? What, that is fantastic? That is something else. Yeah. 
just right off the top of the I'm, glass. I am delighted. Sorry, I'm yeah, having sorry. a moment. Yeah. Um, I don't understand that. Oh, just delicious. Just something else. Dude, how, how are we gonna do this? Like, hold on, you, yeah. listen, you talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, listen. How do we get to, how do we get to, like, how do we found a real drawn and courier? I mean, it's really easy, just, we, we just go apply. I got the beer signal. Hey! I'll always report for this duty. <laughs> you have my mug. And my tap. <laughs> Here, my tap. <laughs> try like this. All right, what do we have on the... So this is a rye pH smell. A give rye it, pH? Give, yeah. yeah, give it a lot of uh, it's the thing. whiff. It's the thing. You didn't just invent that? No, no, no. no. Okay. So the rye pH... Yes. Um, Crafts with rye. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so you'll note that in the body of it. Because typically speaking, an ale is going to have a very smooth, sweet body, independent of anything else you add. The rye adds a little yeah. dark spice into that hey, buddy. mix. Hey, Yes. Are you, are, do we give the dog beer? No, I'm joking. Oh, hello, young Aww. hound. Hello, precious hound. Here. Yeah, it's sweet, but the hop is a fruity hop, okay. and it is resting on top of that spicy grain bed. And the name? That is the Widow's Wake. It's named after the boat that T-Man has. Yeah. Hey, now, I will give you this beer, but you must hold this pup up to our camera. Yeah. And you must provide entertainment. Oh my god, it's just, it's like a hairy person. It's like, this is like a hairy person Whoa. I want to be friends with. This is Gaston. Oh, oh Gaston, did you just oh. come from? Oh. Guys. Let's see, now our ratings are going Yeah. Way. Yeah. Because now you brought an animal. I think we Puppy can't, he's got two colored eyes. Yeah, I wanted to call him David Bow Wowie. <laughs> but, uh, nice. thank you. But what, what stopped Yeah, what's uh, the, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah, what, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. force on earth? The state of David. Whoa. All right, that's good. Yeah. Are we uh, going out this weekend? Yeah, yes. Okay, good. All right, no. Okay, so what's going on with this shit? I, I, I don't know. We, we have made... So we buy... Literally. Yeah, so if we... So, I mean, how does it work? So we would, like, get a building and we a license. We get a building, and we get a license, and we get a fermenter, and that's it. Oh, man, are you smelling this? Yeah, it's delicious. And I want it to be done now, and I want to put some jalapenos in there, because it's going to be unreal. Okay, okay, okay. And then we so, call St. Brian, and then St. Brian comes and does the food for the, the Drawn and Cordier. Uh, because, you know, why not? Like, we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Almost 20 recipes at this well, point. That are grade A. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, we're shutting it all down. We're just going to start a bar. Perfect. We call it puzzles. I learned. From, I, listen, I learned from your brother. Okay, you hold it very carefully. I can't do it anymore. Any wow. tips? Any tips you can offer me would be great. So, um, the fuck is that? <laughs> it's, it's probably the greatest pour I've ever seen. Yeah. <sighs> this is. <sighs> okay, so we have a. We open a brewery. You just don't pour the beer. Yeah, exactly. We're hire. We're hiring, hiring somebody. Hi, hey, we, we, we are, are hiring pourers. Yeah. Ready to go. Um, okay, so we'll figure that part out later. I mean, we've got but, twenty. We got twenty. <clears> but I'm saying right we now. we have the recipes. They're ready to go. We we. Oh really no, Disco King. So have any of them actually been good? Less good in retrospect, or have they seriously all been good? Here's the fact of the matter. There's never any left. Yeah, the, the gone. Like when I go when I go to take this home. It's, it's empty. empty. Right? People coming in, checking it out. Mike doesn't even like beer. Yeah. So the fact that he wouldn't like an IPA, that's not that crazy. No, um, but, but even I, but, I, uh, yeah. Velvet Cape. He actually, he loved Velvet Cape. He has liked a lot of these. Yeah. So not beer people have actually enjoyed a bunch of them. And um, on top of that, like even right out the gate, War Priest. And don't forget, you know, we had uh, kegs and kegs of this stuff out in the woods yeah. for perfect strangers to try. They can go to any one of these SCA camps yeah. and get beer. It's not hard to get alcohol at an SCA event. No. Turns out. Turns out we ran out of beer the first day. Right. No, so, no. A lot of this stuff is sick. It's sick. It would be very nice to be able to share it with a lot of people. Right, right, right. So, we're going to close that topic. Bring it back. 
and we're gonna work really hard on making this beer. I agree. So, uh, we came up with... We're gonna do a mead. We're gonna do a spiced mead. I right? think it's great. I think it's fantastic. Now, there's not much to brewing a mead. No. Generally, right? There's not much to brewing a mead, but selecting what we, how we wanna um, develop it, th there's a lot to that, Yeah. right? Uh, so about how long once we put everything inside the carboy? Um, a minimum. I go with a minimum of six months. S you, it, uh, up to a year. You're, I mean, you're brewing pure alcohol at that point. Yeah. I mean, it's all sugar. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's the that's the reality of a tank of apple juice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Of straight honey. Yeah. So. Let's look up this spiced. And so there's going to be, so there's, there's also a yeast selection on this as well, There right? is a yeast okay. selection. Um, and you can get creative with the yeast selection if you want, or you can just go with some standard mead yeast. They have sweet, dry, and... Yeah, um, you get to pick. Yeah, you get to pick. So let's first talk about how we want this mead to taste. Do we want it to be a dry mead? Do we want it to be semi-sweet or very sweet? And, and um, when you when you do a sweet mead, it tastes like almost like you're drinking this delicious um, fruit juice and candy, whereas dry is much more of like a white wine. And it really is because because yeah. you actually had mead with us out in the yeah uh, out in the woods, and the mead was not taken up as readily as the beer was. Oh yeah, right. I mean the beer was obliterated, um, and the mead was good. But that's just not what people wanted out no. there at that time, yep. right? It's the market. Yep, you got, you got to play to the market. It's the market. Yep. So, uh, yeah, my feeling is that all three of these are good. Semi-sweet, as the channel is sort of recognizing mm -hmm. here, is the midpoint. It's a it's a strategic play yeah. for the market. Very safe. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah, that's a good way to look at it. How, sweet do, how do you look at too Fen? Much. How do you look at Fen as yeah. dry, sweet, semi-sweet? Is there complexity in her character? Well, exactly. There is definitely a, there is definitely a character aspect there. Semi sweet, but semi sweet I think might be the right thing because she'll often tell you horrible things, mm -hmm. but in a in a way that's chipper. Yeah. Right. Right. Like it's not personal. Like right. she's not trying to be mean, but this is real information and you need to know it. Yeah. Right. Semi sweet is almost flawless. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree, Disco King. Um, sweet meads are re can be really, really good. Um, oh, they can definitely be good. They can also yeah. be really cloying and weird. Oh yeah, there's this um, at Penzig, which is a big SCA event every year. There's this uh, one is that of our, our east. Yeah, it's uh, Pittsburgh. Okay. Yes, yeah, great, right? I don't. Okay, sorry. Right. Please continue. Redemption here. Pour me another one. So tell about Penzig. Oh, so um, there's this one camp that makes this stuff called Wonder Mead. And it's different every year, but it's always absolutely delicious, and it's a super sweet mead because they use about oh I know what to tell you, man. Like, I'm not proud. Like, I don't. I've poured it a lot of times, and you know. Yeah, but actually, look look at how look at how. Uh, Fantastic! The cascading of the, hot, the head. Is. No, I was just gonna say. I'm you really know, trying to. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you sell out. it. It's just like yeah. you have to understand that these were rubbed properly a lot. Yeah. And as a direct result, you can see this head retention. Yeah. And 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 it's it's closing the gap extremely well. It's profound. It's yeah. profound. So Penzig. Um, so anyways, yeah, Banners, Wonder Mead. Wonder Mead is amazing. If you ever get out there and uh, can find a bottle, because um, it's literally uh, I think it was 15 gallons of. Uh, honey that went into this stuff. It's crazy. It is not because he shunned the fissure. What? This, uh, I don't support this. <laughs> I don't support this at all. But, but, but this is what it is. So, so they think that <coughs> there's some kind of quantum entanglement between these grains. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Dragon Breath. I actually turned down the floor, the the the, uh, um, the pressure. Too? Yeah. All right. God, that hops. These hops smell so good. On no, you. it's the the flavor too. Uh, it's screwed up. Okay. Oh, whoa. So, so I am looking at medicinal herbs mm -hmm. 
Oh, excellent. Right now. So medicinal, well, spices mm -hmm. that also exist in the continuum of medicinals. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, um, so what did, what did the, uh, did we get, um, did we get uh, semi-sweet? Oh, yeah. Okay. So now that we're going to do semi-sweet, if we're going to do probably a five-gallon batch of this, and that means we're going to look at about six to seven um, gallons of... Oh, up front? Of, up front. So let's check out what kind of honey we want to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm what's, sorry, five to six gallons. Of honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's fun is that we've actually, I've looked through these mm -hmm. spices and we've sort of peeked into these before. There is some really, really cool spices that we can add to this mm -hmm. that not only are they going to work and have a cool character moment in them as well. Yep. They're also the sorts of things that the channel is going to want too. I agree. Like uh, ginger and clove, I think are standouts. Absolutely. So let's pick our base um, honey. So we can go, um, a classic one is orange blossom. Yeah, I see that's what, I I'm seeing that right in there, that's yep. Syrah. That's a classic one. Um, clove honey, or clover if you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a standard light amber. Or we could go with uh, blueberry or blackberry. Yeah, now let's go with blackberry honey. Mm -hmm. Because that's not hard to get up here at all. Yeah, oh yeah. Because... Uh, oh no! Uh, so blackberry honey, or blackberries in general, yeah. if you're not from here, um, you may not know, but blackberries are basically like a weed here. And they, they may be... They may be a weed everywhere, technically speaking, but they are pretty serious business up here. <clears throat> so try that. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, orange blossom is a classic um, that is used a lot, but um, blackberry, I think blackberry would be a neat to experiment with. I mean, yeah. there's a, any, any, any honey on that list right there is going to make this taste absolutely fantastic. Well, yeah, there's no losers here. I mean, these, these, none of these are like pitfalls. No. But the fact is, is that up here especially, it's easy to get blackberry honey. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It smells so good. That scent. But and if you look at it, um, we were going for a color uh, gradient on that beer. That green flame. We were looking between uh, for about a seven on the SRM scale. Yeah. And if you can if you can see in the bottom of the the step filter there, we're really hitting around a five right now. Yep. And uh, once we get to that it's mash, only the, it's only the dough in. Like, yeah. It's, it's got two more runs. In yeah. There. It's going to give us a little more golden color. All right. Well, look, blackberry honey ran away with it. There's no reason to nope. hang on to that. All right. Now, and I'm going to go back to these spices over here. So I'm seeing, I mean, if it's going to be a spiced mead, I mean, we, we can choose it. It can be a bunch of spices or it can be uh, more refined, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I won't use nutmeg in a beer. That's one thing I won't. You don't have, well, you don't have to. I mean, there's, there's other ways Ugh. around it. Yeah, if you want that, if you want that thing, I think you should go with cinnamon or clove. Absolutely. Nutmeg, it just, the oil, as soon as you start having it, like, it never decreases. Nope. In terms of the flavor. Nope. It's, it's like those Jolly Rogers. So yeah. one of our favorite beers is Jolly Roger. Uh, you can get it, if you're in town for PAX or if you live here, uh, in the sort of Please Seattle try out this or this bar. area, yeah. yeah, go to Jolly Roger. Like we write the C team there every week, um, and they had a bunch of different versions of the Jolly Roger. Oh yeah, and we were super excited to try them. And almost to the last one, they every were single one of them grotesque. It well, it wasn't even grotesque. It was Ugh. like I love trying the first sip, and then you know I'm done. No, exactly. But it was purely anthropological, yeah, right? It was yeah. like an education, right? Um, in how it works. The one that was actually drinkable was the ginger one that they did, and I actually enjoyed that. Yeah, that one was okay, but the, but like the spruce was like a good one sip, and then that's enough of that. Mm -hmm. The cherry one really just tasted like Robitussin without any of the cool visual effects. Yeah. So we've got blackberry honey. That's going to be our base. Yep. It's uh, semi-sweet, 
So that's going to help. That's going to help determine our yeast. Yep, we're we're going to sit there with about probably about five to six pounds of honey, and then we'll finish it up with another uh, couple gallons of uh, water uh, mm -hmm. to to raise up the fluid level. Here, here. So I'm going to go in here, and then I'm going to say I'm going to figure out what these different herbs are good for. Yeah. And we can talk. Yeah, we can talk about what kind of herbs we want to do. There we go. Uh, or what the, or what these herbs are perceived to do at mm -hmm, any rate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> no, no one yell granal fissure to us no. at the Jolly Roger. Please. No. It's unacceptable. Um Elderflower uh Graham, you're right, is actually fantastic. As a flavor? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Elderflower, elderberry. I've had a couple elderberries, uh, beers, and meads. Absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, Fay, not sure marijuana qualifies as an herb in this context. It kind of does because the hops are in the cannabis family. Are they? Yeah. So, it ish, kind of ish. All right, so here's the research here. Clove for the anesthetic, yeah, I agree. Oh, exactly, I have it right here. All right, here, so it's taking a little bit longer to put these in here because I want to make sure that you know what the medicinal the benefits are, right? These, yeah. So elderflower, um, Has anybody, have you ever had a mint mead? Oh yeah. You can, you can toss mint right in and it tastes absolutely fantastic. That seems like it would be really good. Yeah. Dude, because, right. because you're mixing it with that sweet honey. What if and you, then you use that like lemon mint? Yeah. Oh yeah, from the, the herb uh, farm? Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that sort of juicy mint if, if, if we get our hands on that, I would love to try that out. Oh wow. Oh, elderflower is good news. Um, Z, one of the things that peop, uh, breweries have been doing is uh, called CBD beer, which uh, for a while CBD was legal um, because it doesn't have any of the hallucinogenic effects. And that's how they were getting um, that into beer. So it's been done. Okay. All right, so this is pretty good too. You got a robust uh, pole? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I want to start with, we got clove in there, elderflower, and I'm going to say the last one. Um, is going to be ginger. I, I like because that. Because I think that, I think I, that I think I, people great. have been pushing, people have been pushing ginger for a while. Yes, Epic Photon, the Vortex. Oh, Crow's Nest, that's a good name. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. That's very good. Now, ginger is, I think, a very natural, just like for ciders. Yeah. Ginger is very natural for a mead, in yeah. my opinion. And 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 you can do we can use candied ginger. There, I mean, there's oh, so yeah. many ways to go about it. Oh, jun yeah, juniper is definitely, I mean, juniper is delicious and medicinal. See, inflammation, anti-cancer, digestion, grain flame. Yeah. Ah. All right, here we go. Give these a try. Because the, the fact of the matter, man, is I want any one of these. Well, the, and so well but, but also, you yeah. can have multiple. You don't have to stop at just one. Remember that. That's true. My fear would be you could get you could make something, especially if you have to wait six months. Like Yeah, it's uh, tough. So it's scary, right? There's, there's a strategic angle. I, no, I totally get it. But, th I mean, there's ways to play around it. Like, what if you did an elderflower, a clove, and mint? Those two flavors kind of feel like they'd play together. Um, yeah, a gin, or especially a, depending on how long. So, yeah. you have your total volume. Mm -hmm. You could bring out 
do your dry additions in that, mm -hmm. in each of those cases, and try to after your primary fermentation is yep. done, right? I don't. I have to say, man, I am pleased as punch that I'm not having to sop, sop this, this up, up every yeah. five minutes, for every you know every fifteen seconds, honestly. But now we're getting into a good place down here. Mm -hmm, look at the color. See that color, darkening in. Mm -hmm. Now I can't remember. Did we decide to go with fresh jalapenos, or we're we gonna roast them and put them in? Well, we if we roast them and put them in this, they're gonna. I mean, it's gonna give it a different flavor. It's gonna give it a different flavor, but they're gonna they're gonna fall apart in there. Mm. And, no, you just and, put them in a bag. Well, exactly, but also, but no, but I'm saying like a roasted jalapeno is gonna have um, the spices in this present, mm. and then the flavor profile moves into something else. I think, I think the intention for green flame was just straight is that jalapenos. is that it have some heat okay. in there on the pod. I love it. Now, man, ginger is coming up the back, but I feel like elderflower. Uh, see, and I like that too. I mean. Uh, the reality is that there's no losers here. Like we try to give you good choices, and then historically you've selected a great one in each case. Yeah. And if you select two great ones, we just try to do two batches. But because <coughs> meat is very, I mean, we could make old. two ba two batches in ten minutes. That's how easy it is. Right. So if if we want to, you know, have a lineup of meads. True. It's not going to be hard for us to do that. True. Just get it going. Yep. Come back in. Dude, that's gonna be sick. We're gonna be coming back in here, you know, in the summer sometime. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have that tank up here and we're be like, all right, we're gonna well, try this out. Yeah, and, and the thing with meads, um, we can bottle it. So easy we to can, bottle we and can, give us gifts. We could put it in a keg if we really wanted to, but. Nah, it'll be bottled. I, I like the bottling of meads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here, but also, I gotta say, I gotta say, Channel, Elderflower to me is the right choice here, story wise, too. So this is a. This so is how, how do you view it as. as this as this as is something thing. that she makes. Yeah, I mean, it's something that she. Makes it's basically for like elderflower in this continuum is for a lot of like illnesses. Mm -hmm. So the rest of them have a lot of preventive, you know, they have preventative aspects. Yeah, anti what I like about this, what I like about this is that it's specifically designed to assist with a bunch of stuff. And so my dad, like his like, jeez, his cold cure. Oh, oh God, you have a string of oh, it's, sing. It's coming. It's coming. And, it's coming. And it's coming. Pet. But like my dad's cold cure right was is like whiskey and honey yeah yeah and it works that was my grandmother's cold yeah cure. exactly my fucking it goes way back no my yeah. grandmother's cold cure is like onions in your socks yeah. <laughs> like i don't i'm gonna try it one of these times and i bet it's gonna fucking work she well see, i bet it's gonna fucking work so my grandmother right from italy right she'd yeah. wake up in the morning and she'd have three shots of brandy and she'd be like oh it wakes me up i'm like no grandma you're a fucking alcoholic yeah like, <laughs> No, it's the other no, way. It's yeah, it's the other way around. <laughs> and then I go to bed. I feel great. <laughs> yeah, I feel and then great. I get up yeah. and I just uh, I, I just continue this cycle all yeah, day. Yeah. Um, but but to me, that's the key about that mm. is that this is going to be something that she has with her. Right. And I suspect that when we do it, when we actually do the making of it, yeah. Um, everything's sterilized. The juice is in there. We're adding our, our ingredients. I think that she probably has a couple different ones. Like she has vials of it, almost. Think, think of her like small little. Well, well, no, exactly. Like an obviator, at least in that context. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my intention, but there are definitely overlaps. I think conceptually between an obviator and a witcher. Sure. Yeah, an right? alchemical. Uh, you know. Well, they know. Basically, they're people that know things and believe things. Listen, I am a Witcher fan. I'm just saying. So exactly. I, but I, I'm saying I, like, you know, so, so when Geralt is down there and he's putting he's, this stuff he's together, like you guys. You know, he, he's making, you know, you're doing all the crafting and you're making your potions. Yep. Like, that's a common, I think that's a common thing, except that one of the interesting things about the Witcher as a character is that most of the things he knows are really just like stories. It's yeah. like the stories that turned out to be true. Yeah. And he just doesn't forget them. He makes sure that he leverages that yeah. as an advantage, yeah. right? And I, I think that's what's going to happen here. I like the idea that it's Elderflower. We should definitely do what, one or two of the other ones. Right. Where they're like her private potions. <coughs> her private reserve, right? almost. Um, so we can go with is it, just straight Elderflower if we want to. We don't have to add anything to this. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord uh, Zaraxxus. The, the cosplay... Took a lot of time, and I had a lot of great people helping, and um, it, it it came out pretty pretty cool.
Yeah. Um, Orion, we could put tinctures in this if we wanted to. So, yeah, sure. um, there's nothing saying we can't. Right. Here, so we'll do elderflower plus mint. Yeah, oh, oh, just you want straight up mint? Okay. Yeah. Uh, elderflower plus ginger. Oh, interesting. So, basically, we'll handle this second face here in one, one sweep. I like it. So we're gonna head over to uh, mint. Everybody loves mint. I oh got. I think that's a really cool combination. Yeah. So basically, mint is a digestive aid, nausea, headache, uh, respiration. Oh, interesting. Mint oil can reduce nipple cracks and pain. Well, that's definitely. I mean, true. I, I need to reduce my nipple cracks on the breastfeeding. No. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's the thing you may not know. Yeah. Be <laughs> Yeah, I mean they're, I mean, they're doing some work. I'm yeah, just, hey, I'm listen. just listen. I've been in a position to know. For those um, with nipple cracks, this, exactly. is, this is your cure. Guys. Get that oil on there. Reduces listen, desperation. The and, more you know. Uh, listen, reduces depression, fatigue on this mint. Skin care, weight loss, improves sterility. But I don't know if that means that the sterility is like even if you're even more sterile or if, yeah, like like it improves your like you're like man, I want to be more sterile today. Oh yeah, exactly. It's ah. like it's like it's like oh man, I'm only this sterile. Yeah, I, I want to be 100 percent, 120 sterile. I, mean, I feel like I feel like it's a binary thing, but I, I yeah. could be wrong. There you go. Yeah, this is a funny thing. Is it every I one agree. of these herbs? It's every like, one, every one of these herbs is like. Oh, it stops cancer, and it's yeah. like okay, well, okay they can't, well, they can't all stop fucking cancer. Well, yeah, we wouldn't have cancer, right? Um, but ooh, I agree. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh who? Elderflower and ginger. It's gonna be oh, real good. Whoa. It's gonna be real good now, unless mint runs, unless mint starts mint running. It, run, yeah, because that's gonna be crazy. Well, so we, I'll we, let this run for about fifteen. Yeah, months. totally. Because God, they're both really cool combinations for different reasons. We may have to, we may have to just get a second carboy in. I mean, it's not hard. Like, and guys, we'll show you how to do mead and- Yeah, you those are, are easy peasy. We'll yeah. do that exactly the same as we do this here. It, even, even it, it literally takes 10 minutes. It's pour, pour, and you're done. Yeah, as long as everything's sterilized first. Like obviously no, this, you like, don't even need to, st I mean, the thing it is- It doesn't even care? Doesn't care about sterilization because it's just straight sugar. And I mean, you clean it out and that's that's about it. Yeah, you use your regular processes. Yeah. Elderflower and ginger it is. Because it's such a high alcohol content. Oh yeah, by it's the not, end of it's it, not like a I beer. yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Like by the end of yeah. it, that's like twelve to fourteen, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like a beer. All right, man. Uh, clues. We didn't get singing. I don't know. It's not my problem. I mean, see. Oh here. Oh, look, look see. At all I was the just gonna say. Look at that. <sighs> see, see, tenuous. tenuous. Yeah, you're right. He is neglecting the grain. Oh, hello, right? Danny. Yeah, How are you? How you doing? Thanks for coming over. I had a super good time. I'm surprised that those didn't get spammed a lot more. Oh, no, they're being spammed. Oh, I, well, I know they're being spammed now, but it's like <laughs> long overdue. All right, here, God, I'm just trying to figure out. It's like, what's the song? What's the song that's gonna show these grains? Like, really show them how With I the feel. The love, how you feel. Yeah, yeah. Can you feel the love tonight? What's that? Could be. Oh, could like be. we didn't start the fire. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah the fire from a. Uh, did a ride out. Fire hole. Uh, let's see. Maybe like a campfire song. What do we think? What, like kumbaya. <laughs> Let's see. See, yeah, Zeldan, that's what I'm saying. What? A little Can You Feel the Love Tonight. It's fucking uh, delicious. Listen, uh, okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm not pressuring know, you into But that. I don't. What's oh, that? a little Johnny Cash. I like it. Yeah. We didn't start the fire. Do you know those words? Because that's a tough song. Yeah, it, it goes fast. Yeah. The heat is on. Yeah, that's a good one. It's on the street. It's on the street. Yeah, it's good. Adele's set fire to the rain, another classic. Oh, yeah. That, Let's see. That strip was amazing. Which one? Uh, there was a, a, somebody did a strip to the song. It was fantastic. I'll show it a to you later. A comic strip? Yeah. I'll show it to you later. You'll lose your shit. 
I'm ready. Oh, fire at the disco, fire at the tackle. Oh yeah, that's a classic one. Yep. Fire on the mountain, yeah. The heat of the moment, yeah, Archon. Let's see. Fire! What? Knock the it right out! By hope! <laughs> oh, see, nah, it's like, it's, you know how it is, you search things on the yeah. internet, it's like fire, it's like, it's like I'm like, fire songs, fire songs, like somebody burned to death, it's yeah, like, no, yeah, I, yeah. no, no, it's go back just, up. Yeah. That's too much. The wheel's on fire, you know, obviously this, this wheel shall explode, that's a, a, a classic problem with tires. Oh, shit, what, what, wait, something just happened. What? Not to, Bob just put something, not to bring down the proceedings, but my friend Mansa, who met you at the DNC, passed away last week. Today was his funeral, and he would love me coming home to Act Inc. He loved the show. Thank you both for being awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow. We certainly try, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we can, I'm glad we can help, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm more than happy to, to sit here with my yeah, friends and, and talk and to talk you. talk to you about that's, beer. That's an easy call. Like, if that puts a smile on somebody's face, like, my Let's day's see. made. <clears throat> God, it's like, are you, are you leaking? No, you're no, not leaking. It's, just, it's it's on the verge, but not there. All right, let's see. It's something like this, right? Um, damn it, because the problem is that you you drink a bunch and then people want you to sing to these. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Grains. Is it? This. Is it a good thing? For me, it is. <clears throat> All right, let's see. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. The baffled king composing hallelujah. 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 All right. That was fantastic. Now. Fantastic choice. Grains got what they needed. Um, we need a name for this motherfucker, right? <coughs> we got the yeast. Yep. Oh, but it's it's a meat sweet, right? Uh, so we're either gonna do sweet yeast, or we're gonna give it a champagne yeast. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. So so break that break down champagne yeast. So for them. champagne is gonna give us a little bit more. Um, so the sweet is gonna bring out the flavors of the honey a lot more. Okay, here. So sweet. Yep. yep. Honey flavors retained. Yep. Um, where the champagne is going to make it a little more drier, but uh, we're going to we're going to get a little more of the um, additions that we put into it, um, like the elderflower and the mint or the ginger that come that's going to come through. Okay. Let's get it. Hey, uh, Matt Will, this right here is uh, for the the Fen one we're doing right here. Mm. This is uh, basically a little tincture that Fen keeps with her, yeah. um, seasoned with different herbs that... Uh, I'm actually really excited we did a mead. Like, that's yeah. this is fantastic. It's going to be dope. And it's, uh, we've had a lot of guests that want to try meads, Yeah, uh, want to get something going like that. And we've had a, lot of, we've had a few cider guests, like yeah. Danny. Danny. Um, um, Chris oh, Perkins is going to come on, and we're going to do a I, cider. I know that Chris Perkins wants a cider as well. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to we're going to try and gamify that. I'm, I'm talking with him now. We're going to try and gamify it for you guys. Oh, hey, uh, Orion Rogue wants to know if we have a non pico <coughs> setup. Do you want to bring you want to bring some of your buckets and stuff from your yeah. traditional stuff? When, we should just show it off. When when we do um, the meads, I'll show you how to do um, uh, what, what a non pico uh, setup looks like. Uh, we'll bring we can I can bring in all of my crap one day and you'll see what it, you'll see how amazing really how amazing this machine is because it condenses 
essentially this table uh, that we're at worth of equipment into yeah. a little box. Yeah, and that's and that's basically what they do. Yeah. They try to automate as much of it as possible. And then the main thing, what are the main differences, at least from the act? Like a lot of this, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. The main difference is how long cleanup takes. Oh God, it, it's amazing. Like, it, that's really it, right? <sighs> It's the, using a Pico saves roughly two hours worth of work, and it's the part of the work that's not fun. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I shouldn't say that. It's fun when you're going through it. It's fun, you know. I've well, been brewing for 15 cleaning years. Yeah. It's not to me. Yeah, is not, not the fun. exciting part about brewing. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, All right, ten more seconds on the poll. Uh, tenuous, uh, Chris wants to do a cider, because he's not a fan of beer, so we're going to do a cider for him, and we'll Damn make it a it. DM cider. Damn it. Is it 50-50? It's 50-50. It, it happened when I clicked. All right. All right. So we, so we, we got to do, we got, we, we basically, we should do two of these. I think it's cool. I, I'm, a, I'm not opposed to it. It's so easy to make. Well, I mean, the, the times that we have done it have yeah. been so revelatory yeah. that it's worth doing. Well, think about, think about the velvet cape and the velvet This is robe. what I mean. Like... They're not, it's all the same ingredients except for what the creatures you're using to process the sugars, yeah, right? Yeah. And the, the, the difference was profound. Yeah. So we'll do, we'll do a champagne yeast mm -hmm. um, and a sweet yeast. Now we what need to What do we name. call it? Yeah. So this is basically a medicine. Uh, it, is something that sh it is something that Finn, the obviator, makes that uh, enables her to be optimal. Um, she doesn't, she's not going to trust an apothecary. She knows more than them. She's gonna make something like this on her own. Problem solution. Add hops, add hops. Your pro problem solver. Derp. What was in uh... it? Wait, did we pick the, oh, we're just gonna do both. Yeah, both. Abruator, business continuity, yeah, continuity plan. Phenacine. Oh, that's good. Mediator, yeah. Oh. Mediator, very good. Very good, risk analysis, yes. Postpone demise. Yeah. Oh, fair winds. That's cool. Fair winds is ethanol. Ethanol. <laughs> Offensive. Yeah. Yeah, magic bullet is good. I'll throw a couple more in here. Fathoms. That's really good. Fenicillin. Oh, hey, Holly. You're doing, oh, you're doing your review of Trash Witch? Awesome. Oh, you're posting it up. Oh, so Commander Holly, we put together the Trashed Witch Dark Contract. Yes. Uh, with her, the um, Blackberry Infused Stout. Thanks, Hot Witch. Oh, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see it, Holly. Did Holly, you... is it a video? Do we, is there a link? Yeah. That we can, like, watch it? God, I don't want to see that. Like, yeah, Holly, you you got to hook us up. Yeah, like, did you? So, so, did you have a chance to? So you've already done the the attempt. You've already tried it. Oh, it's on Twitter. Ooh. Oh, God, Josh, can we all look watch it together somehow? <laughs> oh God, now I'm nervous because now like Holly's actually had it. Like, and it was really good here, and I'm wondering how it survived Lord the, the Kaladar, travel. yeah, exactly. Lord Kaladar, those are uh, cranium rats. Mm. Mediator is, is doing it, but phenicillin is so good. Which one is it? Mediator and Phenicillin are really yeah. bad. Oh, Phenicillin's really good. I, I don't know Mediator. It's pretty. They're both dope. Well, well, we have two. We have two of them to make. Exactly. Oh, Holly, we're gonna make a mead, so you could make. You could watch us do the mead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. So since since we've already agreed to do two, mm -hmm. um, we will call. So we'll do. 
let's see, mediator and penicillin. Yeah. So penicillin we, should be the penicillin should be the drier one. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, no, penicillin should be the one that that um, emphasizes the medicinals. So that should be the, the, sham that, the that'll champagne. Be the, that'll be the champagne yeast, yep. and then the sweet yeast will be mediator. Oh, jeez. Now I know what we're going to do when Holly comes up in two weeks. We're going to make mead. Yeah, we'll just make mead right here. Yeah. Right here on the table. Because she wants to check it out. Yeah. Oh, man. That was exquisite. Well, precious friends, uh, another hour and a half has been poorly invested. Yeah. Uh, been fucked up. In Acquisitions Intoxicated. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, our brewmaster will answer a couple questions. Uh, then I'm going to go hang out with my friend Michael Hulick, and we are going to draw the strip. Well, he is going to draw it, and I'm going to sit by him and eat teriyaki uh, while we do it. Do you want to hit a couple of those? Yes. Um, I was just reading Holly's comment. What'd she say? I think she said, Holly, did you say like one was more carbonated than the other? Mm. Which yeah. is Which is, ah, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's perfectly normal because it's... Um, well, it's, you actually you have added. To, you have to you have to add some carb ca caps to go in it to ship it. It's 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 tough to. Um, but what did she? But, but what did she say? What did she say about it? I don't that? know. I'm so excited. I want to get. I want to go watch the video. Ugh. Holly, post it. Okay. Here's a good question. Does the pico have a name yet? And if not, why have we not named it? <sighs> well, you know. What God, we that do? is a really great. But we should talk to. Um, we should talk to uh, Clues about getting a a plate. Oh, that's a great idea. We should talk to Clues about getting a but plate. But we, we for would it. have to we we have to come up with a name. No. So what we'll do next next show? Uh, oh, sir! Holy crap, Lane! Here, here. Yeah, come yeah. Yes. Hey, this is our this is our friend Lane. He has brought yeah. a mug. Yeah. Good to hey, see you, man. Delicious. And Sean. Yeah, exactly. And Sean. And Sean. So we are gonna uh, be playing on the terrain that they have made later. But for now, we're gonna give them some alcohol. This is working out better than I thought it was going to initially. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Already. Come in for a stream. Start drinking. Give that a try. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Uh, so this is a rye IPA. So it's gonna be. A, it's, give it a couple whiffs, and you'll get a lot of stone fruit flavor, and Thank then you. it's gonna turn uh, bready. Yep. Almost. Oh yeah. I can okay. confirm what the man says. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It is so. But that stuff is coming up at three. All right, I'm gonna yeah. let you guys finish. Cool. I was told to come do this. Oh no, no, you have to. I you have to. Um, so, so get a couple of those, and then I'll, I'll jump out. Tradius, have you um, ever compared your final product's color to the color the computer said it would be, and how accurate? It's very, we very have, accurate. Like weirdly accurate. Um, we have been incredibly accurate with it. Uh, so yes, the Pico Brew does a really great job. But but also Beersmith. I mean, yeah, that's and really beer, yeah, yeah. Beersmith it, and Pico Brew. The ratings for those grains are based on an industrial standard. Yep. Oh, Commander Holly had some had some of it warm. Oh, really? You tried it warm? Interesting. It, it, it can work. Well, the th but think about think about cask. Think about cask. You know, serving temperature. So right? that temperature, that beer really should be served at 55 degrees, if not a little warmer. So having it warm is actually highly appropriate. So it is, no, it is not weird. Um, and that's actually the real temperature you should be having it at. Yeah, so beers have serving temperatures. Yeah, when you go to a bar and you have a beer that's freezing cold, that's wrong. Um, that's not how beer should be enjoyed. Yeah, because it it actually deters from the flavor. Oh, it, definitely. It it yeah. takes away. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So so a lot of these, if you actually look at it, like a lot of brands will have like a serving. <coughs> yep. That they're aiming for. Here's the, yeah. So grab a few of those. Um, I think the Nemesir should be a Groot. If we do a Nemesir beer. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Um. Oh, of the twenty recipes, what are our top five favorites? Well, here, here. So pull up the list. Top five favorites. Um, see, I gotta at? say, I liked the dark wine. I thought that the dark wine yeah. was worth the wait. The dark wine was easily worth the wait. Uh, uh, War Priest is still... War, yeah, War Priest, actually, so this is, this is one of the things that is important. War Priest was the very first recipe we made. Yeah. 
and it is still one of my, my favorites. Favorite, yeah. It is excellent. Yeah. And I would say we did Velvet Cape, but I don't like, uh, Velvet Cape is good, but I don't like Velvet Cape as well as I like, like Velvet rope. rope. I don't know, they're both really good for their own specific reasons. Yeah. I, I really like them both. Yeah. Um, the uh, Unwarranted Advantage. Unwarranted Advantage, the Goza. Also, out of control. Like it was, it's very, very good, but it's also an interesting spin on a on an existing on a style that's sort of rising in popularity yeah. at least in the U.S. And I'm not really a huge Goza fan, mm -mm. but I mean, I can brew them. I appreciate them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to go out and get you know order one. But what we mm -mm. made was something easily drinkable and orderable. Yes, it worked great. Uh, Hello, friend. Hello, friend was great. Like, that was just absolutely fantastic. Tell our friend was perfect. I think that's our five, right? Yep. Yeah. But we've got some ones that I'm that are coming up that I'm really excited about. Um, Blood of the Sun, I think, is going to be ballin'. I think Blood and of the Sun's going to be Barley a Horse was very good, too. It's yeah. a Belgian strong ale. Like, I mean, it was, like, dead on the nose. Yeah. Like, right? And that's the thing. Like, we haven't really brewed something where we didn't want to... We haven't brewed anything that like hung around because nobody wanted it. Yeah, it's never happened, right? Yep. Um, the the I'm, I'm still working on getting all the recipes out. We'll have them soon, and we're working with Pico to get you the packs as well. Um, Jerry just started yep. the C Team season two. How long will, did it take you to write the first episode? I think it took us what couple hours well maybe? no we don't really write it in terms of episodes yeah we write it in an arc almost. yeah yeah we write it sort of like an arc because we got to be ready for them to it break changes. it changes we have to be ready for them to break the whole thing over their knee yeah so we actually have to write a bit ahead so that we are ready yeah. for them to find a shortcut yeah basically but no yeah, we it, had things written and then they took it in a whole different way too so. exactly and then but no idea ever gets completely lost there's always a chance to come back to yeah. it but no our writing sessions tend to last a couple hours long yeah. 2 hours maybe yeah a couple a couple hours on a saturday yeah. and then yeah, we come yeah, in the yeah. office on a wednesday but we start with an idea for the entire season yeah that's that's the key. Well, no, the problem with this season is we already got the idea for next season. And yeah, we had to stop ourselves. We had to stop to writing back. season three to come back. Yeah. Exactly right. Here, so grab two more. Uh, proposed Pico name: the Wart Horse. Wart Horse is very good. Epic Photon. That's really next good. next week. We'll do yeah. a vote. Um. Uh, oh, yes. Precious uh, grains. Would a Drebus beer use as many grains as he has levels? On a Drebus beer, we would probably try to combine as many styles as we could into one thing. Like all the things that, all the things that wouldn't necessarily make sense because each style is defined by certain ranges. Mm -hmm. So if we find like one point from an IPA, uh, an ale, a saison, a stout, and we just start combining genres, like that, we might discover a beer that's gross. It is the name of this device, Jack Lemon. Is not grain on fissure. No. Tenuous. Tenuous. No, it's not tenuous. Now they've. Now he's passed his illness no, on. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna read this. Tenuous has said, Jerry, I offer a negotiated truce, not a vortex, not a grain of fissure, but a grain of cleft. Jail. Yeah. Word jail. Um, recommended for widely available rye PAs. There's not a lot. Stone, it's not common. Stone, I believe, has some. Um, you can, I think it's still up on Northern Brewer's website if you want to brew one. Uh, Will Wheaton did a uh, Vandal IPA, Rye PA, which was yeah, actually, yeah, I brewed Will, it. Uh, Will's it was a really brewer good. as well. Yeah, it was really good. So if you can find the recipe for that and you want to brew it, get a hold of it. It was actually very, very good, well done. Um, Let's grab one more. You, your local peak, uh, Rubens. Yeah, yeah. It may have to be a local brew pub type or tasting room type thing because, again, it's a little bit experimental. It's not really a mass market play right no. now. No. Um, yeah, head retention, not going to be a problem this not, time. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> no way. Puzzles was a, a how I met your mother joke. Um where is this? Um, have you guys thought about putting these into a book? Because I would buy it. It's uh, been what a considered. Great idea. Yeah. What a great idea. 
we might we could do that. that. We could write that book. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's. I mean, we could easily do a book about brewing. It would not be hard. There would not be hard. No. So who knows? Maybe in the next year. Yeah. So I think that's where we've. Oh. Yo. What would be a cranium wrap here? You know what I would use? Lychee. Because lychee has that, like the fruit of the lychee inside the shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has yeah, that yeah. sort of like uh, white mottled flesh. I would go, <coughs> you'd be peel off half of it. I mean, that's what it would look like, right? Oh, I would, that's I would use lychee. So it's like, it's kind of a. It's well, a, we would put it in secondary. Tart, exactly. Yeah. It's tart and sweet, but it'd be such a novel, especially for an American ale. Like, like a pale ale. I would, you, I, once oh. again, go straight pale, pale ale, pale, 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 pale. and then throw that in into the secondary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, channel, have we had a good time with what? 